Commissioner, thank you so much for making a little bit of your time available to Bloomberg TV. Do you believe the Schengen border controls that are now here are here to stay? Well, first of all, let me tell you that we are not in a migration crisis mood. We are in a political crisis mood, as you very correctly uh, said before. And the very first priority is how to better manage our borders. It is exactly what the European Commission is doing during the last three years. We are not where we were three years ago. Our borders are better managed. In the meantime, we have created the European Borders and Coast Guard. But still, it remains an issue. And I uh, understand this is the spirit uh, of uh, the commitment of the European Council uh, uh, last uh, week. Uh, to move forward a more comprehensive uh, uh, policy on uh, migration. But uh, by saying that it is a political crisis, it has to do also with the fact that, unfortunately, during the last uh, two years, uh, populists are gaining ground in uh, Europe. They have articulated uh, their own political uh, narrative, and uh, they have become very influential. Oh, from our side, uh, we shall continue working on the agenda uh, as we have adopted it three years ago when Europe was under huge pressure. I want to tell you that uh, Europe was taken by surprise two or three years ago, uh, especially the frontline member states like Italy and Greece. You remember that more than 1.2 million uh, uh, refugees mixed up with uh, migrants managed to cross the European borders that were totally uncontrolled. But now the situation is better managed. Now. I understand that there is a huge pressure within uh, some member states. Uh, we try to convince them. We are not here to dictate. We keep uh, having an open dialogue with them because finally we all have the same goals. What is the first priority? Better managing our borders. Second is to better manage migration. Third is to adopt new schemes and, uh, and uh, systems. Uh, I remind you that today yeah. here in uh, Strasbourg we are going to have a debate on ETIAS, which is the, the American, uh, something like the, the American uh, estimates. Anyway, we are doing what we can do in order to manage the situation. Yes. Yeah, and I'll ask you about some of these disembarkation platforms or some of these, you know, centers that, you, that um, the council agreed to put on EU grounds. But let me ask again about Schengen. Are the border controls on Schengen here to stay? I have repeatedly said that uh, we cannot uh, have permanently internal border controls. I understand uh, the concerns and the justified reasons of some member states, especially on what it has to do with uh, security. But as I told you before, in the meantime, we have made uh, great progress. As far as the disembarkation uh, camps is concerned, we have to further flesh out, to examine it, because so far, believe me, I don't know. And I cannot name any country willing to host this kind of camps uh, uh, on its soil, within or out of Europe. So it has to be studied, and uh, we can come back if we have something more concrete. But it's a okay, big issue can... in some countries, including, as you uh, mentioned at the beginning, within uh, Germany. Yes? Right, but is it really thanks to Germany? I mean, on a, on a you know big picture level, it's almost thanks to Germany that migration and migration concerns, which has always been your portfolio, is now top of the agenda. Is that a good thing? Well, as I, as I told you in the beginning, it has become a huge political issue, and I'm following with great attention what is happening in Germany. But I want to be frank with you. Germany, from the very beginning, had adopted a very, very clear stance on that. And I would like to praise what uh, Chancellor Merkel did three years ago, because what she did was a very strong signal and a paradigm for the rest of the Europeans. What do we mean when we talk about solidarity? Now, uh, Mrs. Merkel is under fire. But I believe that at the end, what will prevail is reason and a common national and European approach in order to manage this very uh, difficult uh, situation. But it has become an issue, yes, within Germany. Just some minutes ago I was told uh, that the Social Democrats do not agree uh, with uh, uh, what the alliance of the CSU and CDU had decided so far. I know it is a difficult situation, but we are ready to provide Germany with uh, our support, as we are ready to provide with our support and help uh, uh, the other uh, member states, uh, of course, including 
Italy where there are also yeah. some questions because we don't know what will be the outcome of the internal discussions on what are the political positions of Italy. Um, Commissioner, the EU Council has agreed to develop these, you know, controlled centres on EU grounds, but also to look at these disembarkation platforms outside the bloc to process migrants. You have spoken out against these kind of platforms outside EU countries, linking them to Guantanamo Bay. Have you changed your mind about that? Of course not. And believe me, uh, uh, what prevails today uh, within the European Union has nothing to do with uh, uh, the old uh, colonial attitudes. No, we are not here to dictate. We keep working with these countries. I have been traveling from Tunisia to Mali, uh, Niger, in order uh, to uh, find a, a solution. But so far, as I told before, no country in the region has shown any willingness to host this kind of camps. On the other hand, we have to support these countries in terms of development. You know that the European Union is the main donor in uh, development uh, towards all these uh, countries in the area. We know that one of the root causes is not only what we see in Middle East and in North in Africa, it has to do with poverty, climate changes. So we have to cope with all these issues by supporting their governments and their authorities and, of course, the citizens of these countries. But so far, I don't have any concrete information that one of these countries would be willing to host such a, a disembarkation uh, camp or a sort of hotspot. But so how quickly do you think these centers or these platforms can actually be put in place? It depends, uh, and it depends uh, on uh, what will be the outcome of the internal discussion. Next week, we are going to have a very important Justice and Home Affairs Council at ministerial level in Innsbruck in Austria. As you know, the upcoming presidency is the Austrian one, and the Austrians have already put on the table a very clear and concrete agenda on migration, which is on the top of their priorities, including security, which is also part of my portfolio. And uh, I understand that it will be on the issues to discuss among ministers, giving a follow-up uh, to what uh, the leaders had decided last week. So I'm not in a position to tell you anything, but I will be in a position to tell you more next week. Okay, so you'll have to come back on Bloomberg TV very uh, quickly. When you look at risks surrounding Europe, Definitely. is migration the most fundamental problem for the Re European Union, or do you think it, it's actually solvable? Francis, I want to be once again clear and frank. Finally, everybody believed three years ago that it would be the economic crisis that was putting in danger the European project. Finally, it is the migration crisis. Why? Because it has a direct impact on the basic values and principles upon which the European project is built, mainly solidarity and responsibility. And this is what the European Union and the European Commission has been advocating from the very first moment that we are confronted with this unprecedented uh, situation. Uh, I was the, the lucky one to be the very first uh, uh, commissioner, uh, both on home affairs and migration. And believe me, when we started, we started from scratch. But now we are confronted with a deep political crisis. It has to do with uh, political attitudes. Some leaders, unfortunately, in Europe, they want to revert Europe to its dark past. They have forgotten how Europe was 60 years ago when some wise, reasonable and responsible leaders took the big historical decision to create a new Europe, a free space of movement, of freedom, of democracy, of stability. And we have been enjoying the gifts of uh, their initiative during the last six years. But it seems that some people in Europe have taken all these uh, important achievements for granted. No, it's not the case. We have to uphold and defend these values. That's why I told before, it goes beyond migration. It has to do with the core values of the European Union. And believe me, me personally and all my colleagues, we are determined to fight in order to keep the European dream alive.